So today we're going to talk about our just run centers. And I know nothing about it, so Laura is going to do all the talking, and I'm going to sit here and uh, learn. <laughs> as if, as if you could stay silent. There's no way. No, you're right. <laughs> um, but when I did bring up the subject, you had said that you um, volunteered, or that you were working at an artist-run center, um, and that was in Saskatoon? Yeah, well, first I said... Uh, I don't really know anything about artist from centers. What is that? Can you please define that for me? Yeah. And then you sent me to Wiki. <laughs> and I was like, well, I was kind of looking for your definition, but okay. I know, but it was it was just easier than me typing it all out. Yeah. I know, I know that was lame. Then I read I it. I knew when I sent that, that's exactly what you were going to think. I did. I well, totally knew that. Well, but well, then I read it, and then I said, like, oh, okay, like... And you're like, oh, never mind then, because you don't know anything about it. And I was like, well, no. Like, you'll know, you'll know more than I will, but then I can learn, and mm -hmm. I'll be fine. And I do have something to contribute, because the way I worded it, I said I did some community service right. at uh, an artist-run center in Saskatoon called Sky App, which is Saskatoon Community Youth Arts Program. And then found out later today that when I said community service, you thought volunteer. <laughs> and that is not what I meant at all. Um... But, That's because I'm such a lily white, you know, I just don't know <laughs> what all these, you know, crazy, I don't know, anyway, sorry. Well, why don't you start <laughs> off with defining stuff, and then we'll get into specifics and maybe experiences we've had, because uh, I only have that one that I can think of right now anyway, but okay. so how do we define an artist-run center? Um, an artist-run center, I mean, they started in the 50s or 60s. Um, and they were meant to be kind of a counterculture thing. So it was, you had your established galleries, and then you had young emerging artists who were doing cool work who could never get into those galleries. And so they were like, we need a space. Like, we need a space to show what we're doing. We need a space that um, not only shows what we're doing, but like, is experimental, right? So if you have um, an established gallery who's getting public funding, um, who maybe is even getting local funding, they're pretty tied and they are going to kind of stay true to whatever their mandate is, which is usually very established artists in their gallery. So for emerging artists, or even let's say, and even back in the 60s, people were using VHS and different things like that. They were using multimedia. They were doing a lot of experimental things and they wanted to have a space to be able to do that. And they didn't. So they just created their own. And that's basically what artist run centers are. It's a bunch of artists getting together and saying, we wanna do something, let's get together. Let's organize something. Let's organize exhibitions. Let's organize, sometimes they were um, educational things that they did. Sometimes they were um, just sort of nights where you could kind of discuss things like, like not speakeasy, but art speakeasy, right? Where you could kind of get together and talk about what you were doing. Um, even sharing, um, uh, like it even sort of got to almost technical. So sharing what you were doing, like how you were doing it's things. like process and like yeah. workshopping almost. Exactly. So when you talk about an artist run center, it's not just a space where you exhibit. Okay. It is it's something to enrich enrich artists, to propel culture, to um oh let me see. My brain's kind of but but it's meant to be a space that teaches, exhibits gives people a space who would not usually have a space. So a lot of people even sort of do that as collectives, but an artist-run center, the difference is often they are nonprofits, so they apply for that because then that means when they do fundraising, if they do different things like that, then they can, um, then they're able to give tax receipts and stuff like that. But that's a lot of red tape to go yeah. um, like that, so a lot of artist run centers aren't. But there are people who have artist run centers who maybe even wouldn't define it that, they just do it, they work, they get things done, they exhibit, 
they do different things like that. And then there are others, I mean, our Canada Council for the Arts has grants for artist-run centers. Um, and artist-run centers are, are very artist-centered. Yeah. So they are looking at helping artists to get money for exhibiting. So they're very often, they pay artist fees. So then, just to, I just want to say, as, as opposed to, like, they're very artist-focused, as opposed to uh, maybe a gallery which is focused on community. Like, on reaching, like, community? Well, galleries are often based, so if we talk about just a gallery, like just gallery, they are based on money. So they are only going to take your work if they can sell it. So there's that kind of gallery, right? There's yeah. that kind of gallery that's a sales gallery. They are only going to take artists that they know are going to sell, and that's sort of their mandate. Then you do have public art galleries, but those art galleries are usually for established artists. So you have people who have exhibited before, or you have like group of seven or something like that, right? So you have these established artists that are getting shown. Well, there's a lot of emerging artists, and especially back in like 70s, 80s, whatever, and they're like, no, like we want to show stuff, but we can't get a space because yeah. we're not established, we're not um, something historical or whatever it might be, and so no one is going to show us. And so that's sort of where they went. It's kind of that, you know, in, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, it's DIY, it's the punk, it's the, um, it's the whole idea of we can do what we need to do. We can do what we want. Um, you're not going, you know, sort of mainstream society isn't supporting this kind of work, so we're going to do it. Yeah. So often it pushed boundaries, it was often political, it was often um, experimental, um, so it didn't, it didn't follow the same set of rules as a typical gallery would, be that be a public gallery or um, a money gallery, for, like mm -hmm. a sales gallery for lack of a better word. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what you were saying before, I wanted to clarify that thing. But. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess what's, to me, what, and, and in Lethbridge, we have one called Trap Door. And so that has been around. I was at one of the first founding meetings, and I think that was 205, 206, something like that. So we're talking 13 years, 12, 13 years that it's been around. Um, just before we started the cast, I checked out... Um, Facebook just to see what was going on and they are still doing stuff yeah. and I knew they were doing stuff up till a year ago but I wasn't too sure so they're still active they're still around in Lethbridge um, they're called Trap Door they have brought in outside artists they have exhibited um, local artists um, experimental it, their work has been um, or the work that they represent um, has been varied and their exhibitions have been varied. From the spaces they do, one exhibition was purely a window, another exhibition was really interactive. So in Lethbridge, they have played sort of a big role in bringing, I would say, more experimental art and an art, a, like more of a community as well. Um, they're, it's really cool, Trapdoor. Um, so they don't have a space, like a physical space anymore, do they? No, and actually most artist-run centers don't. Or many artist-run centers don't. I shouldn't say most. Many don't. And that's kind of part of it. It's, um, maybe, yeah, I shouldn't say most, I should say many. Um, and that's kind of part of it, is not being able to afford a space. So, <laughs> What's kind of important is being able to showcase artists, to give them a space for things to happen, having and paying for an actual beautiful gallery space is not as important. Yeah. So that's almost like the last. And so when you're figuring everything out and where the money goes and how you can do things, that's not as important. And so I know with Trapdoor, and that was one of the reasons with sort of the... 
um, symbolism of a trap door and who knows what's going to be underneath yeah. kind of thing. Um, that has been sort of their mandate. We won't pay for a space, but we'll make sure we pay artist fees and we'll make sure we create a community. We'll, I mean, they've done so many different, different shows here in town. And like I say, bringing out outside artists. Again, these outside artists are on the fringe, though. They're not not your established artists that you're going to see at SAG or the University of Lethbridge. They're different artists that you're going to see. And it gives also local artists a space to be able to exhibit. And they also support young artists, which is important, um, because uh, to be able to give resources and support to artists that are emerging is important as well. So just to... <laughs> I feel to, like I'm just blah blind. Well, that's because you know, I'm asking you questions. I that's guess good. that's what a podcast is. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, so how would you further explain, because we're talking about Lethbridge specifically now, mm -hmm. and you, you like using this city as an example. Yeah. Um, we also, so the two big galleries we have are CASA and SAG, and you brought up SAG. And University of Lethbridge. Yeah, they've got more than one gallery space there, too. Yeah. But I mean, like... Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's... No, like, if you're not a student, you don't go over there for the most part. No, you're right. Like, we so should, many people... but we don't. Well, I mean, it's just geographic. Like, I think that's it, but... Yeah. Well, and the penny space downtown, too. Yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah, that's... I wouldn't consider any place that shows work a gallery, but that's just me. They sell coffee and then they have art as an aside. Is how I look at it. No, no, no. Uh, no oh, you not mean that the penny, penny like um, uh, across the street? What's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but they no. don't. They don't have work in there every like year round. Well, right? it's a university-owned space. Yeah, yeah. So mostly it's like master students or you know, they, yeah. um, events organized by the university. So they're definitely not an artist run center. Yeah. I'm just saying it is another space down. Oh yeah, no, another gallery space for sure. Yeah. That's I just I always thought you were talking about something else. Yeah. Um, okay, so then how would you further define what is SAG, what is CASA? And compare that, I guess, to something like Trapdoor. So is Trapdoor the only artist from the center we have? Yes. Okay. So uh, then, as far as I know. Yeah, as far as you know. Yeah. And then, so, what are the differences? I mean, SAG and CASA have differences too, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, what would be some of the... How would you define those two things and then, again, compare that? Because I feel like CASA is kind of somewhere in between Yeah. what you describe Trapdoor as and what SAG kind of is. I agree. Um, so it's my personal definition. Yeah. Well, actually, okay, I can give, oh, two, I, I, I can give two cents here first and then you okay. can clarify because okay. I've only been here for three years oh. and I've, I've gone to CASA, I've exhibited at CASA in like an auxiliary space there and then with SAG, I've, I've gone in there because of school stuff, I've never gone to an actual exhibition there. One reason is because I'm not a member and I've never paid money to go and look at the work there. I have a family membership if you ever want to go. <laughs> I know, I know. But that's, so that's, that's one thing right off the bat as yeah. a difference there. I'm like, I know SAG, so mm -hmm. South and Alberta Art Gallery. Yes. Um, that they, it's, it's a fee. You have to pay an admission fee to get in or a membership. Which is like many. Yeah. Uh, I'm just many, saying like that's yes. a difference between like yes. those two major galleries in, in our city. It's one difference. Yeah. Um, and they do have, like I said, I worked with them just in a capacity of a teacher because uh, they do an annual exhibition that includes all of the schools in the city, um, in our left school district, and that is a free viewing scenario that they have there, and so um, that was kind of a community thing they did. As far as I know, they don't have a lot of workshops and stuff that go on, so with CASA, there's no fee, like there's a voluntary, like there's a box there if you want to put cash in, but you don't need to pay anything to go see the work. It is a much bigger space you can rent out rooms there to teach music uh, for music lessons. There's like a dance studio there that I know people do dance out of. I think they might do yoga there too, but I'm not 100% sure. There's a couple spaces to rent if you're an individual um, that you can like r pay a fee to rent studio space even to work there. And I know that they have workshops, like a lot of, I think most of their workshops are uh, ceramics and clay and stuff from what I know. And then, I mean, then they have the gallery as well. So it's this huge thing where I feel like they really push community involvement. Before I forget, I'd like to add, um, they do printmaking. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure what else they do, but they do a, a lot, actually, of um, public um, sessions. Yeah. So CASA does a lot. Yeah. And they they also then rent out studios. Yeah. SAG But they're also, public studios, by the way. Yes. So I don't want to, just because like some people might, like I thought originally, oh, like private studio spaces. The no. music ones are private. Well, but the visual art spaces, it's like one big room. This is a painting room. This is a ceramic well, room. Well, and yeah, and you have the space, but you have to take your things when you come and go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it is, it is. It isn't the same, but it is really a great resource for our community. Yeah. The SAG, I just would like to add, does do actually quite a few events. So they'll do like different um, writing workshops. They'll do, they'll have authors that okay. come through there, art authors. They'll have uh, movie nights. They have a lot of, they do have a lot of kid programs. So kids art yeah, programs. Yeah, the, uh... um, but they, I think they do really try to engage the public more than the public. I think they do really try and engage the public. So, all, but the thing that makes them so different than Artist Run Center, and like you say, CASA is kind of a, a bit in between because they are very focused on the public and making access to art, right? They really want yeah. to make art accessible to the public. And I know the trapdoor has worked that. with CASA in some capacities, which I'll yes. talk about in a second. But but first, can you just, what are the differences between SAG and CASA? To me, or like, uh, how would you define that type of space? Because we know they're not an artist from center, but like, just from Okay, comparison. just from an exhibition perspective? Well, no, which, I mean, just like, what about just like, what is SAG? So not just like the exhibitions that they kind of okay. have, because artist from center, as you even said, it's not about just we exhibit work and that's it. Right. And neither do those spaces. So, what like what kind of if we call SAG a gallery because it's called Southern okay. Alberta Art Gallery, what kind of gallery is it? It's it's a public art gallery. Okay. So it is funded by our government, partly yeah. by our government. It, it is also funded by fundraising. It's funded by memberships. It's funded by all those things. You don't go in there with the idea of, I want to buy something. When you go in there and look at things, they don't have a price on them. So it's public so, even though you have to pay to get in? Yes. I've never seen that. something I never thought of it being public if you have to pay. If when you go to Saskatoon and you go to the public art gallery, you don't have to pay? Well, I'd never considered it a public art gallery if you had to pay. If you had to. The Mendel was voluntary just like CASA. It was very much a public. I always thought yeah, of it. Yeah, but, but what about the, the one now the that Remy? you went to? Yeah. I, I never, I don't know, I just, that's the thing, I never... Do you pay? Yeah, you have to. Yeah, but it's well, a public uh, art, I'm sure it's funded well, publicly. I don't have no idea. You don't think so? I, no, I just, I have no idea. <laughs> I bet you it is. Okay. It seems, yeah, I just, like, it for, seems like it would be, like from what I've seen, and I'm sorry, I don't know, but, and I, just, I didn't look up, but it seems like, from what I know, and the pictures that I've, anyways, it seems like it makes it sense. Is. I, I think, like, now I'm thinking of private, it's more of, like... We host these artists, and you come in and you buy from our. Now, yes, private it mostly, and this like this is totally yeah. ting off the top of my head. This is not, um, but when you have private, you're trying to make money off the sales. Yeah. When you have public, you it's important that people see that. Yeah. Like yeah. art is so so important, and so you have somewhere like SAG, and it's so important that we see these things, and they're artists from all over the world, that it's really important that we see. Yeah. Like, very important. Oh, yeah. I get that now. So, so, okay. so SAG is public. Yeah. And so is CASA. CASA is very public. And CASA, I would say, and I feel so bad, again, like saying these things, because I am saying what I think, yeah. and it could be totally wrong. So I'm sorry, CASA, if I am slaughtering this. But I think CASA is much more... Community based, it's still you don't see sale signs like you don't see this is five hundred dollars or something. This is for the public. This is for them to see. It's a lot more accessible. Yeah. You are right Way now. We have um, um, Nick Wade is showing here in the tree and on where in the space we're at. Yeah. He also was has shown in Casa within the last year. Yeah. So it's showing 
Um, you can have a very local artist, which they often do. They're very good at exhibiting local artists, along with an artist from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when I think of some of my favorite exhibitions within the last year, like 90% of them have been local artists. They exhibit a lot of local artists. So I mean, you today have more local than SAD does? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, 100%. And you talked about SAG's funding and stuff, so what about CASA's? Are they not getting the same type of funding from the government? And I think CASA is much more publicly... Oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I think they're... No, I don't think it's more publicly funded. They're both publicly funded. They both really need community funding. Um, I think they both try and engage. The difference is that SAG is, is what artist run centers were probably, they were revolting against. They were just saying, here is another way, and they want to create their own space. And so maybe, like you say, what kind of happened is between the artist run center and between something like SAG that's showing established artists, then you end up with something like um, uh, uh, CASA. Yeah. So you end up with something like that. I don't know without artist-run centers if we would have ended up with spaces like CASA. Okay. I think that they those sort of spaces were born from artist-run centers, okay. in my personal opinion. So it's kind of like a hybrid of those two... Well, I think so because I think I think that artist run centers said no, like we're not going to be ignored anymore. And especially technology and um, um, uh, experimental. experimental and emerging artists. Yeah. So kind of those three things are the things that you weren't able to have within um, the typical gallery setting. Yeah. And so I think those were the really important things in, in supporting those. So, I mean, you and I, as, as not established artists, right? I don't know, there's this whole thing as what established artist is, um, how many exhibitions you have and how long you have. Like, there's yeah. this ridiculous little formula. But um, I know, and probably it's a really good example, when you're in university, I kind of think it's an artist run center. Like, I know as soon as I sort of got into my second year, I was like, man, I get this. Like, let's do this. And I would, I mean, I, um, our art society, we got, you know, a space out at the um, Coaldale Library was our first thing yeah. that we did, right? And so we would just look all the time for these spaces. We're like, we're students, but we want to get out there. We want to get in the community. And there were probably six different spaces that we did within my second or third year of university. And it was that thing. It was like, we are young. We are whatever, but we want to get out in the community and we want to exhibit and yeah. we want people to see our work. And we don't really care if it sells. It'd be brilliant if it sold. But that wasn't the idea. Yeah. We didn't. We wanted people to see it. Like, it was so important just to get out in the community and part of being in the community is being accepted. So being accepted as an artist. Like if you can get out and you're in Coldale and people are coming and they're like, oh, your heart's amazing. It's like this acceptance that you have and, yeah. and it's an acceptance that you're not gonna get from the canon of, of art and, and what it is. And so it's kind of this juxtaposition between being in um, a really academic setting of, of what art is, and so, you know, which would be, which would run more along the SAG, right? It's more academic, established, whatever. And then your students, and you're like hungry, and you want people to see your work, and you're pushing, right? So yeah. it's kind of a, I don't know, yeah. It was, it was exciting, yeah. and it was, and it was when, you know, in the last semester of me going to school is when my collective started, the Blanket Collective, and that was our thing. I mean, we wanted to do exhibitions. We wanted to do things that, and it wasn't just to show our stuff. It was also our very first show was, you know, sort of an unjuried, we will show everything that comes, like sort of thing, right? So it, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's cool when people have that drive, because you need to have that drive to keep it going. 
Like it's a lot of work yeah. to be able to do all that stuff. So, and that's why I think a lot of artist run centers and people burn out or it's like collectives. It's like anything where people are getting together because they believe in something. Yes. But also, um, they're coming in not paid. They're coming, you know, and and so they burn out fast. Yeah. When you have that passion, it's like a it's like a flame. It burns out fast. Well, I think too because you're not. It's not like you have a huge group of people sharing all the this work. work. It's like a few passionate people yeah. that are like really pushing things hard. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like I said, I only really had one interaction. Well, Tell no. me about that space. Yeah. Uh, so, Sky App, like I mentioned before, Saskatoon Community Youth Arts Program. I don't remember the first time I heard of it. Um, I didn't really know what it was, and I like passed it all the time because it was it, it was downtown, so in the heart of Saskatoon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't remember, like I said, the first time I heard of it. But um, at one point, and it was around it was around the same time, like I had uh, a girlfriend that was part of one of their programs there. So they have like trying to compare the space I don't know how to compare but they 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 have like a gallery space and they have like a, a workspace um, and there's like a couple offices in there and stuff like that so one of the things that they're I think most well known for is the urban canvas project I think is what they call it and like like so the name suggests Saskatoon community youth arts program mm -hmm. so they definitely target uh, youth, especially at-risk youth, inner-city youth, however you want to uh, word it, um, and target in a way of saying, we have a program for you that that might be able to help you out. So what they do, and again, they I know that they are underfunded, for sure, and, and they, I mean, they're still open, but I mean, um, they can't do as much as they'd like to do because they don't have enough funding from the government and, and whatever else. Um, but yeah, so they have this, this urban campus project where... They have a certain amount of people that they take in between a certain age group, um, and they had requirements that were like you can't have a job. Um, that like they, they have like a, a screening process um, that they would take in a certain number of people for a year, and they would go in teams and they would paint murals, and they would get paid like they they get like it's that is their job. So it was a mural. They weren't actually exhibiting anything else. It was. Yeah. It was sort of this mural. Yeah, so some of the things that they did were that they painted, like, the power boxes. Because you were saying that Saskatoon actually is big with sort of um, legit graffiti or murals and stuff, no? What did, I don't know what you mean. Well, I thought that Saskatoon um, ended up having, like, more murals and legit... Like a big legit. What do you mean by legit? Do you mean like legal, they, they, or do you mean legal? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's way no. more legal stuff than here for sure, but that's because they're a city three times the size. So that's one reason. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, they do have a lot. They, there's only one free wall where you can go and just do that. Yeah. But all the other walls are like secured. Like I mean, like someone approaches a business, and then I see. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, definitely paint our business. Or there's a lot of tattoo shops where the people that work there are artists themselves right. that would do murals, so they, they work in the space and outside the space and secure other opportunities for themselves. Yeah, there's a lot of legal spaces, but they're not free spaces, there's only one. Um, so there's a lot of spaces that, that are have been made by a certain, some of it, it's almost like a monopoly. There's like a, a couple groups of, of acquaintances and friends that acquire very many of the spaces. Uh, but this is a whole different thing where they they are trying to give people that that for some reason or another haven't been able to find work, trying to give them legitimate work oh, that I are see. interested in the arts, because sometimes oh. they're not even like artists in their own right yet, that they wouldn't define themselves as that. But they're giving them these opportunities to get, you know, to get working, to get, you know, something on the resume, to like whatever that's why it's like a certain age group mm -hmm. and there's certain requirements. But they secure these spaces in Saskatoon and do murals, whether it's under bridges or they're doing the power boxes or whatever else. So um, that's a major thing that they do. And then, so that's where there's like this one half that's kind of like a work area where they're creating these things. Um, and then they, they have also like drop-in art center like time. So they have someone there, it's usually, 
think it's in the evenings from like 6 to 9 or something like that, two days a week. I think it was Tuesdays and Thursdays they used to do it, um, where they would have somebody that is that, that works for Skyapp that stays there as like a supervised thing so that you can have at-risk youth again or anyone can just drop in and paint. Uh, okay. So there's no fees, there's no nothing, like whatever, they're using the supplies there, they can just drop in and like maybe there's a day where someone's like working on something specific um, and then it's not like a workshop, like a planned thing necessarily, but you just drop in and maybe somebody is there that can help you out with something or like teach you something if you are so inclined. So that's another thing they have there. And then they do have a gallery space. So do you know how that's funded? Nope. I know that they get some government funding. Right. And I know that, that funding has been very tight yeah. before. I don't know where they're at right now. Um, but I believe his name is Daryl, who was kind of the one who initiated this whole thing. I don't remember how many years they've been running. I should have looked that stuff up, and I didn't. Um, I want to say it's been running a couple decades, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe it was the 90s he started it. I really don't remember. But, yeah, it's, and I don't know if he's still involved or not, as for, like, 10 years ago he was still involved, but I, I haven't, like, been in that space for a while. Um, so they do have, like I said, a gallery space. There's no fee involved in, in coming in. Like, the community, just you can just walk into the gallery space, um, which is separate from all that other area. Um, but they, they have some shows that happen every year. Yeah. Do you just look up how long they've been? No, oh. sorry, I didn't. Do you want me to? No, that's fine. I just didn't know if that's what you were looking up. Uh, so they have this gallery space there. So there's some exhibitions that are... There's one called We Needy Graffiti that they've been doing for a while. Mm -hmm. So and there was, I believe, initiated by... There's someone who has been working there for in some capacity for, for years. And I don't know if she still works there or not. Her name's April. Um, but she kind of initiated this thing. And it was... That was one thing. It's like, well, how can we get... And we, like, I spoke with her about this, and I spoke with Daryl about it, too, because, okay, I need to backtrack for a second, because I'm doing that thing that I do. So <laughs> I, I don't remember how I heard about it. Like I said, I, there was a girlfriend that I had for a little period of time that was part of this program, um, like the Urban Canvas Project program, and ended up getting a job there and working there in other capacities much after that. Um, but I also ended up uh, getting arrested for graffiti multiple times, but... I, I have community service hours that I needed to serve somewhere, and I was like, man, I don't want to go to the food bank. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Like, I'd done community service before, like the food bank and other places, and so I talked to Daryl, and then he was like, yeah, yeah, I guess we could do that. And then so I ended up doing odd jobs there, just like cleaning brushes or clean. There's all those old supplies. You need to go through that and like rinse out like those like those puck paints, like the, the you know, oh, tempera, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like cleaning those and like a lot of things like that. Um, but then also I got to like, in the alley, there was like a thing that I got to like paint just as like practice for me, basically. Like I just got to like paint it. I'm like, right now I'm doing community service and I'm getting to like paint graffiti. So like that was, that was a whole other thing that was just amazing about that experience because shout out to Daryl. Um, it'd be funny if that wasn't his name. I honestly forget. <laughs> it's been so long. Um, but, uh. So that's kind of how I was initiated into that space and stuff. And then after I knew about the space and had a connection there and stuff, so there was this 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 exhibition that I thought was really really important. And like I said, there's an annual one they do every year where they get people that that do graffiti that are involved in that community in that subculture in the city, and they have an opportunity to show work that is legal work inside a gallery that people can come and and, and purchase. Because um, they do sell work at that gallery, um, but I mean, it was really important to just kind of have that for the public to kind of see, like, oh, this is also graffiti. It's not just like vandalism. It's not just tagging. It's not just this or that. Um, and and saying like, oh, this is really important to us, and we want to to be able to exhibit that and and have the community see that in that light. Yeah. Um, so I wish I kind of went through because when I was in university. The, like years after I'd kind of done some community service and stuff there, I um, I did like a documentary about city space in Saskatoon relating to graffiti and stuff. And I interviewed both those people I talked about, April and I believe his name was Daryl, and I didn't review that before this. But um, yeah, the, the center was like really like important for, again, at-risk youth and for like involving some 
cultures that aren't getting represented or getting represented mm -hmm. fairly or however you want to word it. Um, I can't think of any other like annual exhibitions they had, but maybe they did have some other ones that were like. So when you say cultures that weren't represented, you mean like subcultures in that way, especially that were doing graffiti, or do you? They had some mean... FNMI focused things as well, um, for sure. So they had some focus on like. And when you say FMI, you mean? FNMI, um, like First Nations and yeah, MHC people, yeah. and like sort of Indigenous Aboriginal peoples that were represented there. Yeah. Definitely, they they made sure that that was like something they focused on as well. Um, I exhibited there, not just in the group shows of the graffiti thing, which I only did, I think, once. Yeah. But we just applied for whatever, and um, my friend Alex and I just had, like, a partnered show there that we did once that was mostly abstract work. So, I mean, again, and that's because we were in university, yeah. emerging artists, however, like, we yeah. were not so established by any means. They were supporting the, yeah. Exactly. So, that was, like, like so they're very community-driven, very focused on on helping people through art to yeah, yeah. to just like again like stuff on their resume or just a safe place to be like in the middle of downtown at night like so it was a very caring space um i don't think they focused necessarily like i said on experimental stuff or whatever but i mean they did have a focus on underrepresented underprivileged um folks. and they called themselves an artist run center I don't remember, but I think it. But fits in, in your mind, that is. In my mind, something. I think that definitely fits into to that definition, into that space. Um, I know there's other artists run centers that are in Saskatoon that are more of what Trapdoor is, but even more established. So they have like a phys I think AKA. Well, AKA is yeah. the one I was thinking of. Yeah. AKA is the one I was doing um, some research in Saskatoon about some different um, feminist collectives, and went to AKA. Uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, who was helping me do um, uh, research, we just like happened upon it in this yeah. one night, and they had these tableaus. They were just amazing of famous um, artists from like the Renaissance period. But yeah, AKA was like amazing to me. And was paved there? No, yeah, paved, paved is there. Is paved? Yeah. yeah. So paved was another one, right? Yeah. And those there. are both downtown as well. Yeah. And I don't know, those were two that I remember just being really impressed with yeah. Saskatoon and what was there, and it was really well attended, the one I went to. Um, it was Cindy, Cindy... I was going to say, yeah, there's, uh, there's that connection Candy, between, whatever. between Lethbridge and Saskatoon. Yeah. yeah, and that, yeah, that's when I first saw her. Um, she was, I don't think she was in the tableau, but I think she was, like, she was involved in it somehow. Um... But, uh, yeah, so I, AKA, I was just, like, really impressed yeah. with what they were doing. So, I don't know. Yeah, seems like they have a good history with their supporting the alternative arts. Yeah. Yeah, which is, like, kind of the big thing with, with it, right, is the alternative arts team. Being able to not only accept it, but promote it and... Um, you're not looking at a financial commitment. So you don't, you're not waiting for one of your members to go, no, that's not right. Or why am I spending my money that way? Or why is this happening or that happening? Your members are looking for you to push the boundaries. They, yeah. they are wanting to support that. That's what they're wanting to do. Yeah. And that's, that's like the big thing that's really important with artist run centers is that acceptance and promotion of experimentalism. Yeah. I remember, and so it's on my phone, there were two people. One was A. Bronson, who, remember I kept saying, what collective was he from? Yeah, yeah. And it was General Idea. So okay. they're like a really famous Canadian collective um, who have done all kinds of things. And so he was involved in a lot of... Um, uh, artist run centers to begin with. So I really liked what he had to say, so I'm going to read it out. Damn it, now it's gone again. <laughs> Hang on, folks. Um, but uh, I really liked what he had to say, and so I'm going to read it out in its entirety that I have. Okay. Um, it was natural to call upon our natural attributes, 
the bureaucratic tendency and the protest work ethic. And working together, and working sometimes not together, we labor to structure or rather to untangle from the messy post-60s spaghetti of our minds. Artists run galleries, artists video, and artists run magazines, and that allowed us to allow ourselves to see ourselves in an art scene, and we did. And so what it is in there is you're not waiting for the big galleries. You're not waiting for the SAGs or, uh, quite honestly, the University of Lethbridge Gallery who's showing us established artists. You are going and you are either presenting yourself or someone else. You're, you can see yourself in what's happening. Yeah. And you're part of it. So I thought that was cool. The next one, and Susie Lake, I talked about her as one of my inspirations and our favorite, favorite artist. Artists yeah. thing. So she said, um, it's obvious that some alternative to the present gallery situation is needed. Galleries exist primarily as businesses not as support for art. While they offer some support, they get more out of art than they put into it. Okay, that's a cool, important right? distinction, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, galleries are only one factor of the support and not sufficient. There should be a lot more financial support from the government and artists should decide how the money is used. But um, the first sentence, where they get more out of the art than they get, right? Yeah. And um, I, I don't know, I, I really think it's sort of, for me, it's that DIY, like that, like, we are going to, um, we're going to figure it out, we're going to, we really want to make sure other people can, like, it's, it's really important that we're supporting other emerging artists. I don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's cool. That's all I got, dude. Yeah, I think, well, I don't know, I think that we, you know, had some good examples, too, and just talked about it in general, because yeah. I didn't know a lot, and like I said, I, I should have done more research about the Sky app, um, as to, like, maybe their, their statement, I guess, or their, their, um, what would I want to call that, like, uh, uh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, not like a manifesto, but kind of like Mandate. a, yeah, um, yes, like I said, they, there's a lot that they, I know what they, you know, like a lot of positivity and good they've done that's, like, integrated the community, or an artist reaching out to the community, and, like, yeah. I was going to read what Trapdoors was, kind of. Sure. Because being as it is local, it's our organization. Yeah. So I was going to read what they put through as their overview. So Trapdoors, an artist run center, is a community-supported, not-for-profit, artist-run platform for contemporary art. We encourage untested and emerging art practices and support artists in an early stage, in early stage of their careers. Nomadic and wayfinding trapdoor center operates outside a fixed location. We have no permanent exhibition space. Exhibitions and other forms of presentation are developed in close consultation with artists and are based on project requirements. So artists and Trapdoor um, pays artist fees. And I think this is a really important distinction. Um, obviously places like SAG also pay artist fees because that's something that, are, um, um, that has been decided, that yeah. that's sort of a bar. That if you, um, but places that are artist run centers or are maybe like you and I decide we're gonna show some artists might not pay artist fees. Yeah. But a lot of times with artists run centers, it's really important to them that they're paying these artist fees. Yeah. Because they want to show, they want to establish that there's a worth for artists and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's, you know, almost always an integral part of, of what's going on, is making sure artists are getting, getting those fees. And I know I was doing one at... Um, it was called the Bowman then, not Casa, and I did a show there. And you know, the artist fee. I mean, it's not like I took home a ton of money. I pretty much put it in my exhibition, and every yeah. cent I had went back into there. But it was my show was a better show because I had that. I was able to exhibit the way I want to exhibit, where I would never have been able to otherwise. Because I'm just, 
I'm just Laura. I'm just this little tiny <laughs> artist in Lethbridge, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And I think Lethbridge is really lucky. We have really vibrant art scene. We have something even like the um, Gorilla Art Collective, and I don't know a lot about them, but, um, you know, they're sort of, they're a collective, so the, they're promoting themselves, yeah. but still they're putting out local art. And right? they're finding spaces to do that. They're like, finding yeah. spaces, yeah, so... Yeah. And like, yeah, and I think like you said, like for such a small city, vibrant in in that like the art scene is vibrant, and also in the aspect that we have very different types of galleries. It's not just like oh, we've got a bunch of galleries and they're all the yeah. same type. It's like yeah. we've got a lot of art that is even in not galleries that is just like seen in in different like businesses and locations. We've got you know we've got some public art. Uh, it'd be cool to have more, but we definitely have some. Um, and then we have these different like spaces like like, so, like trapdoor or even just like collectives that are finding innovative ways to f- express their own stuff. But that's the thing. I think that that's almost like a step towards being artist from center. By the way, I understand it. Like you said, a lot of it's DIY. So it's mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm not finding, you know, like I'm, or I'm gonna find my own space. Like mm-hmm. whether or not like oh my application got denied at Casa. It's like a year long wait anyway, or yeah. whatever. Like I, I need to exhibit this work. I need to find a way to do it, and then yeah. they find a way to do it, um, and then yeah, that's obviously super super important. That I feel like the the artist run center is almost like a go between two of I can go to them rather than start from scratch on my own. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they've already done so much groundwork to say mm-hmm. hey. This is what we do. This is we we started this because we needed places to exhibit, and now we want to reach out a helping hand. That's like, and they work to get you your artist fee that you should get. Yeah. And and that's important. And the reason we have an artist fee is so that you don't have to focus on trying to sell your work. Yeah. So the artist fee is like we believe in you. You deserve this. Yeah. And you can sell your work, of course. But that's not what this is about. Well, this is about exhibiting emerging artists and what they're doing. And that's why that fee is important. And especially because you mentioned how a lot of the art was maybe a focus on being very experimental. Mm-hmm. Some of it's not work that you can sell. It's exactly, not saleable. Exactly. But if it's still important that it's seen and that it's expressed and whatever else, and that makes complete sense that it's like, yeah, 100%. You, you should have the materials, the space, the time, like whatever else to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. No, totally. Right on. Well, um, <laughs> if anyone else obviously has input and they want to like direct us towards... Uh, and any other artist friend centers in Lethbridge, I'd love to know. Like, yeah. I feel like I try and keep up with what's going and I know there's different collectives, but it would be really cool. Like, Maybe there's other things out there I'd love to know. Yeah. Feel free to correct us on anything that we may have gotten mm-hmm. wrong. Which is probably a lot. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what I feel like. Anyways, yeah. Well, is that our artist life? That.